Hola, everybody. Are you trying to choose a tool to automate and run your load tests, but with so many options out there, you're not sure which one to go with? Well, in today's video, I'm going to break down some key categories that I think are the main decision points when picking your tool. Okay, vámonos. When we start automating load tests, we need to pick the right tool. And hey, remember, we're talking about load tests. Performance isn't just load testing. But seriously speaking, no tool does it all, no matter what they say. That's why I created these classifications based on each tool's strengths. Some of the tools and categories will overlap or cross lines. You will see that when we draw our categories. But don't worry, this is just my personal interpretation of some guidelines for you to decide what to go with. But uh, let's start with the first thing that usually hurts the most, price. Talking about price and money. In this area, we got paid tools versus the free or open source ones. Yes, I know, I know, open source and free aren't the same thing, but uh, you get my point, right? In the list of paid tools, we got uh, Load Runner, NeoLoad, WebLoad, Postman, Load Ninja, and a few others. A key characteristic of this is that most of them require a license or to give a payment to actually execute load tests. This payment usually goes along with the size of your load test. Some of these tools may even charge you to write the scripts or to open the scripts to start to work with them. You may need a license, so beware. A cool thing with these tools is that they usually come with tons of built-in features and pretty beautiful GUIs. They will allow you to click on buttons, drag and drop stuff, visual elements, and to see, literally see, what is happening. On top, they will support lots of crazy protocols, new protocols, traditional protocols, old protocols that no one even thought that they were still around. But because of that, they tend to be heavy and heavy to install as well and to execute. They need huge installers and you need powerful machines to run them. The cherry on top is that they often support distributed load testing right out of the box. You just have to configure a few things and you are good to go to have load generators all over the place or all over the world if you want to. And on the plus side, these paid tools usually come with fairly decent support. If you have problems, they are being paid to help you. So they generally do a good work around that, depending on who you ask. On the free or open source category, we have JMeter, K6, Gatling, Locust, Vegeta, Taurus, Artillery, and many others. A key element with this is you can use them for free. You just download them on your own machines or your own infrastructure and you're good to go. You are good to start scripting, you are good to start executing and doing all sorts of crazy things. Most of these tools are code first or code oriented. That means that you have to write some code to create the automations, except for JMeter. We will talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Another characteristic is that these tools are command line focused. This means that you will be able to execute, debug, and do many things with your automations through the command line. Again, JMeter is not that much on that side, but you still can do it. They tend to be lightweight and really, really quick to install. Well, again, except JMeter, depending on who you ask. These tools support a very limited amount of protocol, generally the most popular ones like HTTP, gRPC, etc. But if you have special needs, usually they are extensible, have plugins, or the community may have come up with something for them. Also, distributed testing can be a little bit tricky because you have to install and configure. Some of them do not orchestrate well distributed tests, and you may have to rely on your own configurations. Many of them, as they are produced by companies, they have a cloud setup, which of course you can pay for, but well, that puts them out of the free rate, right? And last, support usually comes from the community or passionate maintainers or the company that creates the tool. Again, since it's not paid, you will get the best support from the company if you're paying for some of the services. There are a few other things that we can say about these categories, but those are the key differences that I see. Remember, things may vary from tool to tool. Some of them may go into each other's category, but this is my general perspective. Another category that I came up to is whether the tool is built around scripting and execution via a graphical interface rich and pretty or through code and the command line. 
Some tools claim to be able to do both, but usually one side is stronger than the other on one of the tools and so on. On the graphical interface oriented ones, we have mostly paid tools like Load Runner, NeoLoad, WebLoad, Postman, and sneaking in our old friend JMeter. These tools will let you create and execute your automations and load tests using a GUI or a graphical interface, in which you can drag and drop elements, you have buttons, and it everything looks pretty. They are supposed to be friendly and prettier for non-developers. And with their interesting interfaces, developers tend to avoid them because they have to learn the interface from scratch. But even if the tool vendor tells you that because it's prettier, graphical, and drag and droppy, you don't need to know much about performance, well, you need, and you need to know what you are doing around them. Also, these tools, because of the graphical interfaces, tend to generate scripts and scenarios with multiple files, which can be a mess and can be distributed multiple types, and that makes it difficult to maintain your automations without the GUI. If you don't have that installed, that becomes like a barrier for your whole team, and that makes it hard to version and work with them in Git repositories like GitHub, Bitbucket, and others. Many of them have command line options, but it's not the prettiest experience and I feel like you can tell they are not designed for that. But again, this falls fully on opinions. In the category of code-oriented tools, we have KCX, Gatling, Locust, Taurus, Vegeta, and some may even argue that Lobrunner fits there too. A key characteristic of this is that to write and create scripts, define scenarios, and so on, you can do that using a text editor or a code editor, which the advantage is that almost every computer or electronic device comes with one of those. Because they don't depend on these heavy GUI and pretty buttons, these tools are usually lightweight, pretty, pretty easy to download, install, they go straightforward, and they are super, super quick to gather. And since they are oriented at programming languages or are code-based, they support languages like JavaScript, Java, Python, YAML, .NET, and even Scala. Because these tools have no graphical interface, they are fully command line focused, meaning that to execute, to debug, and do many things through them, you have to leverage the command line. And that makes it great for developers who are used generally to the command line, and because of that as well, they are super easy and straightforward to integrate into your CI-CD pipelines. Just invoke the command and you're good to go with the load test. Again, in this category, some tools will blur the lines and cross to each other side, and some others keep adding features. But again, this list is a general classification. Now, the other classification that I came up with is when we automate, we can do automations that are multiple steps, long sets of jumps from page to page or to action to action, and in the front end. Or they can be just simple API calls. One here, you call it, done. All this follows the automation pyramid principles. Check the video up here. And yes, some tools can do both things, but here, because some of them are better at multi-step and some of them are not so good, I am basing these capabilities where I feel they shine. In the category of tools that are good to create multiple humongous scripts, I have tools like JMeter, LoadRunner, NeoLoad, and WebLoad. Hey everybody, quick amendment. I created this video a while ago, and recently I learned that K6 also has this capability of handling multi-step scripts. Check it out in the video up here. These tools are great for capturing flows or stops from front-ends, browsers, application interactions, and so on without needing external components. You just open, click, 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 and you get all the steps and elements in a script generated for you. All this is done because some of them include their own recorder, an application that will hatch to the browser or the application that you want to create and grab all those steps. And they also can help you to break down some correlations, put some timers, put some steps. They make it as pretty as possible when you have to do so many steps. And because they are oriented for that, they include and offer lots of features that will help you to handle these multi-step flows, like nesting, visual elements, little squares where that means this is a step and that you can put them inside of each other. These visual aids are also super helpful when you have huge, huge scripts with several steps, correlations and stops and many things so that your script doesn't become unmanageable and it doesn't go off the rails. 
On the single step or API oriented list, I have tools like K6, Locust, Gatling, Postman, Vegeta, Tauros, and many more. I know these tools can handle multiple step flows, but it quickly becomes painful when the automation grows humongously and you have multiple, multiple lines and you don't even know what is happening where. Another characteristic is that these tools usually don't have powerful recorders, not a dedicated browser app or to latch to apps or mobile apps or whatever you're trying to use. They generally depend on third party applications to do that. Another thing is that the correlations have to be done programmatically. They do not have pretty boxes or things where you can create them. And because of the programmatical parts, it can get messy if your correlations have multiple steps and grow too much. But these tools are amazing when you have one or few API calls per test or per automation. When you just have to authenticate, call the API and you're good to go, it's clean and focused. Just in a few lines of code, you will have an awesome automation ready to be executed. And as well, this is going to be super light, super quick and super easy to do. And yeah, this can be a little bit subjective, but in my experience, some tools are just incredible for these single API calls that you can create as Lego blocks. When you need to put something bigger, a like big load test, you can put all these little APIs together and create a huge load test. And some others are better suited for big, messy, multiple step flows that have hundreds of correlations and can drive you nuts pretty quickly. So there you have it. Can you think of any other ways to classify these tools? I know that there might be many more ways to slice this cake, but these are the main ones that uh, help me to guide real decisions at a personal level. And if I missed any, drop them in the comments, please. I would love to talk about them in the future and discuss these categories. And if I forgot to mention a tool that you really like, let me know which one do you like and where would you place it on each one of the categories or any new category that you can come up with. Maybe we can put together a fancy category map together. And hey, if you want to dive deeper into this odd friend that was JMeter, the shapeshifter, check out the videos on screen. But for now, I hope that you learned something new and that you have a day that is very bonito. Adios.